Greetings. Welcome to the Healthy Sales Chick Show. I am Nancy White, the host of this show, and we're all about our healthy mind, body, and spirit. And as my dear friend and founder of Win Win Women TV, Paula Fellingham, always says, we open our hearts and our arms and welcome you. We are always talking about ways to nurture our mind, our body, and our spirit. Because if we don't, one of those areas are going to start squawking at us. And just thinking about it, do your cells need a little bit of refreshing makeover? Maybe. Well, this is a time where we are going to talk about amazing ways, again, to nurture that mind, body, and spirit. And we have incredible guests from time to time. And I definitely have an incredible guest tonight. And our guest is an amazing, smart, intelligent woman. And she's so young to have gotten this um, early in her life. But I will tell you, when I met Allison Hero, she is a professional organizer and decluttering expert. Yes, an expert. And we're going to touch on a few topics tonight. And she has so much information. She just might have to come back and have a, an episode two in her series. But tonight, we're going to just talk about how clutter begins in the mind. And when it's not dealt with, it goes into our body and into our um, physical world as clutter and disorganization, which, again, affects our whole lives. Another topic we're going to touch on is how decluttering and organizing can teach us skills such as goal setting, setting boundaries. Some people don't like that word, but becoming aware of what um, we surround ourselves with and what's supporting us and what isn't and how to make it smarter, healthier decisions for ourselves. A third area is about simple tips. We love those tips to help someone start decluttering their physical environment to help them lower stress and feel more in control over their lives. Thank you so much, Allison. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Oh, thank you, Nancy. I'm, I'm privileged to be here. I'm so excited to share some tips and just have a great conversation with you. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And Allison is at one of my favorite places in the world. She lives at the beach. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to be jealous, but I'm going to celebrate that she does. But just a little bit of information about Allison. She, again, is a professional organizer and decluttering expert with nearly 20 years of experience. I know she doesn't look like it. She looks like she just got 20. But she's also as known as an international best-selling author. And she's developed um, some courses to help empower us to learn skills in setting goals and boundaries, as well as becoming aware of what um, they do when we get surrounded by these things. We have to have those positive things. But she also helps us to learn how to make smarter, healthier, and more empowered dis decisions. A again, to change our life for the better. And isn't that what we always want to do? Keep evolving for the better. She works virtually and loves helping others to regain control over their lives. Welcome again, Allison. And I just love asking a, a question. What was it that influenced you to develop this business and this career? Okay. Um, well, oddly enough, I was living in New York City at the time, and I had wanted to go out on my own and start my own company. So I started a company called Gotham Concierge. And one day, somebody out of the blue contacted me and I met with her and she said, have you ever considered adding professional organizing to what you're doing? And I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. But I had been helping my bosses before that get themselves organized. And I thought, okay, let me give it a try. And then as I got into it and um, learned more about it, I realized, oh my God, these skills are so transferable. Like I started, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I thought I was pretty organized beforehand. I was not when I was a child though. I mean, you would, there would be 
stuff everywhere. So I had, you know, I was not one of those always neat kind of people. But when I grew into adulthood, I found that I liked it. Um, but I still had clutter. And when I started using it, I started creating systems that just made my life better. And I realized that I could start learning how to set healthy boundaries that then led me to start making smarter decisions so that my life felt better. I, you know, lowered my anxiety levels. And I felt like I was more empowered just by, you know, have, you don't have a lot of power in your life. But boy, your home is one place where you have a, a lot more control. Um, even if it's just your bedroom or a certain area, you have control over what you are keeping, even if it's just your wardrobe, you know, and, and talking about your wardrobe, that's one of my favorite places to start. Because think about it, that is the first place that you go to in the morning. That is one of the first decisions that you make. So don't you think that you owe it to yourself to be able to open up that closet door, see everything, know where everything is. It's all nice and organized. You're not going around looking for everything. But not only that, you know that everything fits and you like everything. So you start your day. I don't care if you decide to wear sweats that day. You are going to start your day looking and feeling good. And that empowers you to just start your day off in a good mood, feeling good about yourself and feeling empowered. You just started off making great decisions for yourself. And I think that's incredibly powerful. I agree with you 100%, Allison. And um, I saw this neat quote and um, I thought of you. It said that Clutter is anything that doesn't belong in a space, whether because it belongs somewhere else in your home or it doesn't belong in your home any longer. And yeah, so yeah. That that, that's you. very true. Yeah. And one easy tip, designate a spot for everything that you own, because not only will you know where to find it, but you know where to put it back. And that helps you cut down on clutter. Clutter kind of starts when you're like, I don't know where this goes. And then all of a sudden you have this pile of, I don't know where that goes. But if you know where everything goes, even if you do start to get a small pile of stuff, you can very quickly put it back where it belongs. And it helps you take that small pile and keep it small and not have it grow until it becomes overwhelming and anxiety inducing. Absolutely. And as we go through our conversation tonight, these are great things for us to learn, but also to pass on either if we've got children or, you know, if you've got a spouse or you're living with somebody then everybody gets to be on the same page, Allison. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I really believe that the younger that you can start teaching your child these skills, the more that they can incorporate them into their lives and it helps them learn how to make empowered decisions for themselves at a young age. And they should be contributing. It shouldn't just be what be one person. I, that's why I work with families. I've worked with kids. I've worked with couples. When you're all contributing and everyone knows where everything is, you don't have one person who's exhausted, overwhelmed, and starting to feel angry and, and put upon. You have everyone contributing, and that contributes to the harmony and the health of the relationship of the entire family. And I think that's so important. I uh, spot on. So, so one of our first topics that we were going to touch on was you now how clutter begins in our mind. And again, when it's not dealt with how it goes into our body and into our physical world as clutter and disorganization. So what would you share, um, Allison, a little bit about how it begins in your mind? Yeah, well, I mean, when you start collecting a lot of like negative stuff in your head and you're either not, um, you know, turning it around and making something positive out, out of it or just too much stuff is going on, you, you stop thinking positively and, you know, you're going to start um, just feeling more weighed down. You're going to feel angrier, more frustrated, more stressed out, more depressed. Um, and if you don't find healthy ways to tackle that, um, it's going to start making you, especially if you go through traumas or something like that, it's going to start seeping into your body. Your body's going to feel tired. It's maybe start having some illnesses, dis-ease. Um, and also it can just creep out into your outer world. I mean, 
anxiety and depression are linked with clutter. So it's very common to see someone who's struggling with anxiety and depression with clutter. And then it just becomes like a vicious cycle where it, you can't really get on top of it if you're struggling with anxiety and depression. But if you ha can find pockets of time where you have energy to just start conquering a little bit of clutter, you don't have to do your whole house. But if you could just do, you know, one dresser drawer or just clean off the top of your um, night table or something like that, it helps alleviate that clutter. It helps put you back in control. And also when you start taking, you know, one of the things that you said about clutter that no longer serves us, when you're surrounding yourself with items that you don't care about, that maybe bring up unpleasant memories, um, that make you feel guilty, that make you feel ashamed, um, or just, you know, uh, fearful, those are, even if you're not, even if you're shoving them in a closet, it's still there. It's still whispering at you. It's still telling you, you're not enough. You suck. You, you know, you don't deserve good things. But if you stop and start thinking about how is this affecting me? What am I surrounding myself with? And is it supporting me in the life that I want to live or not? So if you start even just with your clothes of, does this fit? Because I think that when your clothes fit you well, you feel differently, you know, but if you've got a closet full of stuff of, oh, 20 years ago, I fit into that. And now I don't. Is that a positive? That's not going to help you get back into there. That I mean, I feel like that's just using shame to try and get yourself to diet, which usually makes you head to the refrigerator more so than the treadmill. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good thing. But if you have clothing that fits you and you go, you know what? I may not be the size I once was, but I love myself and I'm only going to have clothing that fits me and looks good on me. Well, that makes a huge difference. I think you let the resistance go. You're practicing self-love. You're, you're showing up for yourself and you are surrounding yourself with the things that truly matter, that have meaning, that bring joy, that bring happiness, that have good memories. I mean, it makes a huge difference in, in what you surround yourself with. And I would rather have you surround yourself with quality than quantity. And I think so much of us end up with qual quantity rather than qu quantity. And it's a big difference in that qu quantity. Um, it, 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 it weighs on you. Um, I think it weighs on you in a physical sense and in a spiritual and in an emotional sense. And when you let go of it and you create not just a physical space, but it creates like a, a spiritual space as well. There's more space in your head. There's more space in your life for newer, better things to come. I've had one client tell me that when she finally just got rid of the stuff that no longer fit her, she... She was actually able to lose the weight without even trying. I've had people who, when they finally got their files done, not only did half the time they find money hidden in those files, more often than not that happens, um, but something, some more money or something else good comes in. It's amazing when you get rid of all that baggage, what is finally, what you're finally allowing into your life that you've been holding back on because maybe you didn't think you deserve or you were just so exhausted by the clutter in your life that you couldn't even begin to start. Um, and that's what, you know, clutter is so exhausting. It almost stops you in your tracks. It does. So, it, it actually really saps you of energy. And just yes. like you're talking about, and, and I've shared so many times about B and R, bless and release. And when we have to release so we can receive, and, yes. that's, and it has to keep moving too. And so- yes. We don't want things to get stagnant. And yeah. that goes into another area that you're such an expert in, you know, how decluttering and organizing can really teach us some skills such as, you know, goal setting and setting boundaries and becoming aware of what we're surrounding ourselves and, you know, what's supporting us and what's not. You just touched on it a little bit, you know, again, and, and, and it empowers people. They don't yeah. realize that it really empowers them. So, how have you seen that really um, in your experience, you know, how that decluttering and organizing really can help with those areas? Okay, well, let's take our closet since we've been on that subject most of the time. And I think most of us have more clothes than, than we really need. So if you want to set a goal, say with your closet, say, I want to walk into my closet 
and I want to know where everything is and I want to like everything that I own and I want everything to be able to fit, right? So that's a goal. That's super easy. It's just, what do I want to get out of this? Imagine how you want to feel when you open up your closet. How do you want it to look? And you can just write down like a couple of things that you're looking to get. Well, you can use that goal to help you set some healthy boundaries. And this is all low risk stuff. So it's an easy way for you to learn how to set healthy boundaries for yourself where it's not gonna be a big risk and it's not all that scary. If you get rid of a sweater, chances are you can either find it again or you know it's not gonna it's not gonna kill your life if you get rid of a sweater and then change your mind. Um, so you can use those goals to help you set the boundaries, which would be I'm only keeping things, and I would frame it in the positive, not the negative. I'm only keeping things that fit. I'm only keeping things that I'm like. I only am keeping things that flatter me and I'm excited to wear. So that helps you know what to keep, which then helps you know what to get rid of. And then awareness. So I'm a big person. I'm a big fan of if you have a category, say you're doing sweaters, pull them all out because I want you to be aware of what you own. When you know, oh, I own 20 sweaters and 10 of them are black and I don't even like that color. You know, now you can see what you have. It's right in front of you. You can try them on. You can make intelligent decisions. And also the awareness is, is this sweater supporting me in my goal, in my boundaries, you know? So you've got two different types of awareness that just by pulling it out, you're going to have access to. And all of that gives you information so that you can start making smart decisions. And I think the average person has over 100 items in their closet. So you go through your closet, you've just made 100 decisions to empower yourself. And that's a skill that you just have to keep doing and keep doing. And so when you do it in a low risk area, such as your home, you get to build up all of those skills so that you can apply those same skills to literally everything in your life. Hey, every time I'm around this friend, I now notice that I feel exhausted afterwards. And you might start becoming aware that, you know, they're really negative and they say mean things to you. And then that's going to help. help. What are you, well, what's your goal? I want friends who make me feel good about myself. So what's your boundary? You either have a conversation with them or maybe it's time to let that person go. But you've got the information where you can use those same things to help you make the smart decisions so that you are only surrounding yourself with things, with people, with opportunities that are aligned with who you are and where you want to be going. And and, you know, it just it I think it uplifts you. And I've been able to use that in everything in my life. Is this clutter or is this helping improve my life? It's empowering. It is. And I love how simple that you keep it, Allison, because so many people get overwhelmed with the what ifs. I don't know how I don't blah, blah, blah. So in keeping it simple again does spill over into all these other areas and become aware. Just like you say, we talk to ourselves all the time anyway. So just asking ourselves, is this building us up, take, tearing us down? Is this empowering us? Does this make me happy or does, does this make me sad? Is this always a struggle, you know, when you're talking about some things and just having that freedom, that just freedom and that yeah. just being, you know, more lighthearted. So thinking about some, different tips too, Allison. You know, you've given us some great information. I'm so glad this is recorded because we can always go back and watch it again and listen to what you're doing. I love taking notes sometimes, but I love that I can go back and listen to your conversation again. But again, thinking about some simple tips to help someone that just really feels overwhelmed and um, just, you know, as far as about starting decluttering, even if it's a little drawer or whatever, what are some things that you love to help with those simple tips helping people to just get started? Well, as you were saying, um, I think people make it really complicated. And so what you want to do is simplify it, keep it simple. So instead of going, oh, my God, I have to do the whole house, which is overwhelming and exhausting. And I think most of my clients go, I don't even know where to start. That's the big thing. So you pick a room. 
And then you, maybe you either pick an area or you pick a category or you pick an area and a category so that you're working just in a small area. So maybe it's, I want to work on my closet first and I'm just going to work on sweaters. And then you just pull out the sweaters or I'm just going to do my night table or I'm just going to do one drawer. You can set a timer um, if you want to do something like that for maybe a half an hour. And uh, the other thing I recommend is once you're finished, um, um, you know, maybe even five minutes a day tidying up so that those pockets of clutter don't keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you've got a family, you can make a game out of it. Hey, we're going to take 15 minutes. Whoever gets the most things put away back where they belong gets to pick the movie for tonight or something like that. Or, you know, if you're doing it by yourself, if I do this for myself, then I'm going to take myself out for ice cream or, you know, whatever it is that um, to make it fun. Or as I was telling you earlier, the 12, 12, 12 rule where you pick um, you two, 12 items that you donate, 12 items that you toss away, and 12 items that you put back where they belong. And a little starts to add up. So you can either pick doing it for maybe five minutes a day, or if you pick maybe a half an hour, one day a week, put it in your schedule. This is the same as exercising. You know, you have to put the things that matter to you in your schedule so that you are getting it done because it's an act of self-love. Um, and, you know, again, designate a spot for everything. When you know where it belongs, it makes it easier. And get rid of all the stuff that doesn't have meaning to you because it is a lot easier to keep things decluttered when you don't have a mountain of stuff. Absolutely. And I love this little Finnish proverb. It says, happiness is a place between too little and too much. <laughs> and so, you know, and with that being said, you know, sometimes, and this is another whole topic that some people probably will get in touch with you, but you know, um, as we continue to age and then our parents pass away, then a lot of people inherit things um, that they didn't have before. And a lot of, you know, adult children, they have their homes, they have everything in it. And then when they've inherited all this new um, stuff, what do you suggest? Because I know that is a very emotional kind of situation too. But you know, when all of a sudden you just, you know, you've got your home organized, everything is in its place, whatever, and then boom, <laughs> surprise. Yeah, it, it, it's overwhelming A by the sheer volume. And then you've got all of the memories. And I think that there's a lot of guilt that gets into there and you feel guilty as if you're doing them a disservice by getting rid of the items or you just, for whatever, you know, either the relationship was really good or really bad, it's hard to let go. But I don't think that anyone who has passed um, would ever be like, my stuff is what matters. I don't see that being a reality. I, I think it's that the memories that you shared, the things you had together. So pick the items when you're ready. Obviously, if you're too much in grief, it's okay to wait. So when you're ready, you go through a little at a time, you put like things together. That's another easy tip. So put similar things together and then you can go through what's going to add to your life what is going to give you happy memories and if you didn't have a good relationship with that person it is totally okay to let go of every single solitary one of those items you can either donate them or you can sell them whatever is going to be easiest for you in fact i had a client who recently was he had a good relationship with his mom and he had one a china set left and um he was hoping to sell it, but it, it's sometimes such a pain to try and deal with all of that. And he didn't want it to go piecemeal. And I said, then just donate it. It's going to be so much easier. You can just get it out of your home and out of your head. You had a great relationship. She's not going to care. It's time for you to just let it go. And he's like, oh, my God, you're right. It is just it's time. And, and just knowing that he could do that and it wouldn't be a big deal, I think what allowed him to set it free and just move on with his life. So, you know, and that's the thing, that tangible stuff, and most people are hiding it in storage or in a garage. I don't care if you can't see through the boxes, it's still weighing you down emotionally, physically, spiritually, it's time to let it go. And it's okay to let it go. 
I love it that you gave him permission. And sometimes that's all people need, Allison, is just somebody just to say, it is okay to release it, to let it go. And I heard years ago that um, in this country, we're the, probably one of the only countries that we have a garage to take care of the overflow of stuff in our house. Yeah. And so I was sitting there thinking, just like you said, you know, so when was the last time you touched something? When was the last time, you know, that you looked at something or, or whatever that is? I mean, that, that includes everything, all the stuff, like, you know, we get attached to. So I know we're or just, I love all the information, but what other things can you think that you have come across that you would love to share some lessons or some other tips about, Allison? Um, let's see. I, I mean, I would say that, you know, getting in touch with your emotions is probably going to give you a lot of information. Um, because I think that's what happens is sometimes you're ready to let go of something and then the guilt comes back in and you know, you, that's when you have to, and I've done that myself. Oh, well, you know, I never wear that. Oh, but it fits me, but I don't like it. And I don't deserve to have that in my house. I recently, um, I had a beautiful dress that I had in my closet for years. And every time I went to think about wearing it, I kept thinking, well, I wore that to my aunt Dottie's funeral. Mm. And I had to just finally get rid of it because that was not, I, I don't want to be thinking about that when I, when I wear it, if that was not a, a, a great day for me, I had to let my beautiful aunt go, but I have quilts that she made for me. And I love those quilts. They're beautiful. And they make me think of such happy memories and good times with her. Whereas that dress just did not. So if you are keeping something because, you know, maybe someone gave it to you and they're going to be mad at you because, you know, they gave it to you, that is, that's an attachment that you don't want. They are guilting you and that's not a healthy relationship. And after someone has given you a gift, it is your right to literally turn around and give it to someone else or donate it. It is your property. And you get to do what, what you want to do with it. And it is okay. They're allowed to have their reaction, but you don't have to take that in as if it's somehow your problem. And so I think that decluttering is kind of a healthy exercise in a what you're allowing into your life and what you're not allowing. And when you get rid of the items and the relationships that make you feel ashamed, afraid, guilty or apathetic, it's incredibly freeing and it's incredibly empowering and it helps you build healthier relationships with other people. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And again, we want the good positive things to continue to grow and swell up and to help us to have that thriving um, life, that healthy lifestyle, Allison. And, and this is all part of it. I'm so grateful for, you know, you sharing your wisdom and knowledge and understanding in this topic and, and congratulations on your book. And, and I'd love for you to share how people can get in touch with you, Allison. How, how can they find you? Okay. Well, my website is my name. So alisonkiro.com. It's one L with Allison. And um, so, yeah, that's how you can get in touch with me or I'm on social media. Um, my TikTok and Insta links are at Allison K declutters homes. So those are two really great, easy ways to get in touch with me. That is so fantastic. And I know that You've got tons of other resources and more things that you can share. Um, as we even talked about, you know, um, a site, Everything But The House, and which is an incredible worldwide organization that you can sell a lot of things um, on, especially that you've inherited. But so, but our last quote today is, clutter is nothing more than postponed decisions. And so yeah. I think yeah. that's awesome. But thank you again, Allison, so much. And I encourage everybody to join us the next time for more of about your healthy mind, your body, and your spirit. And contact me, um, the Healthy Sales Chick. You can go to my website for a complimentary um, you can set up for a 30-minute time. Where we can talk all about you, and it'll be all about the great things that you're doing for your healthy lifestyle. And then if you want to, there is a couple of quizzes. One is evaluating your stress levels. 
And the other is evaluating your healthy um, state of being right now with some great suggestions. And remember, what goes past your lips becomes part of us within 36 to 48 hours, but affects mm. your bodies for years to come. And um, be blessed and remember to take care of your temporary temples until you get your permanent maintenance free one. And please connect with our other Win Win Women um, guest and show host um, in our community. There is a plethora of information for you to be able to um, just tap into 24 7. And again, this is a time for us to really support each other and learn how we can pass on those amazing nuggets, just like we have learned from Allison. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you so much, Nancy. I had a wonderful conversation and I appreciate you inviting me onto your show. Absolutely.